morning, children. I hope you've woken up well this Sunday morning. Smile. Hi. So today, I'm Teacher Ian. I'll be taking you through the Sunday school service. Let's bow our heads for a word of prayer. Abba Father Almighty, King of kings and Lord of lords, we do come before your name, saying thank you for the protection you gave us over the night, that Father, today we have woken up to a great day, that Lord, even as we do sit, ready to hear of your word, that Lord, may you be with us, guide us and protect us. For it is through your mighty name, I do pray believing and trusting. Amen. Okay, good morning once more. So, I want to ask you a very easy question. Who has heard of the word history? Who knows anything about history before? Well, history used to be a subject in primary, but in a squeezy, it's carried forward to high school, where we learn about the past. Like, do you all remember of President Kibaki? He was the president before Uhuru, of Honorable Uhuru. As you see that, that is history. It's something that happened before Amakitambo. So the person who studies history is called a historian. Like, let's say someone who was during the, the times of Moses. That's how we came to know of the story of Moses. Someone wrote down his story. The person, like, the person who now wrote down those words is a historian. So let's take it like this. Let's all pretend we were part of the Israelite army. Many years ago. Kitambo kabisa. So, back in those days, we didn't have these normal books. We didn't have the Kawaida notebook where you could sit down and say, write your notes, write something you want to remind yourself. But in those days, they used to use scrolls. Now scrolls were like a big book that was just coiled. So, when you wanted to write, you would open up the page, then you'd dip either a feather in ink, and then you write slowly. And back in those days, not everyone could read. So, when you aliandika, you had the same duty, you had to read. Now, as we can see, we are back in the Israelite army. Mm-hmm. Let's take it like this. Can we all turn our Bibles to the book of First Kings? Chapter 19, we'll be reading from verse 11 to 13. Let me give you a moment to turn your Bibles. Turn your Bibles to 1 Kings, chapter 19, verse 11 to 13. Okay? And I will read to you. This is a story of Elijah. Elijah was one among the many prophets that God used to get his word to the people. Uh, who knows who a prophet is? You there. Who is a prophet? A prophet is anyone who, through God's given talent, can see into the future. And what we call a prediction is what he makes. Like, let, let me say, tomorrow you're not going to school. You see, that's a prediction. It can happen, it might not happen. So, Elijah was one of the many prophets that God used to prophesy to the Israelites. So, I believe we're now all at First Kings Chapter 19, 11 to 13. And it says, God said to Elijah, Go stand on the mountain, for I am about to pass. Then there was a great wind, but God was not in the wind. Then there was an earthquake, but God was not in the earthquake. Then there was a fire, but God was not in the fire. Then there was a gentle whisper. A gentle whisper. When Elijah heard it, he pulled his cloak over his face and went out and stood at the mouth of the cave. Then a voice said to him, What are you doing here, Elijah? Let's stop there for now. Okay? Now let's take it a second time. Now I'm going to read it again. This time, let's all say the lines that begin with, But God was not in. You remember that? But God was not in. Let's read that together. Higher. Then there was a great wind, but God was not in the wind. The second one. Then there was a fire, but God was not in the fire. Then lastly, then there was a gentle whisper. A gentle whisper. When Elijah heard it, he pulled his cloak over his face and went out 
and stood at the mouth of the cave. If you've noticed, the author who has used the repetition of then there was a wind, then there was an earthquake, then there was a fire, then there was a gentle whisper. In so repeating, it is easy for you to memorize that verse. You see, simply you say, then there was a great wind, but God was not in the wind. Then there was an earthquake, but God was not in the earthquake. Then there was a fire, but God was not in the fire. And lastly, then there was a gentle whisper. When Elijah heard it, he pulled his cloak over his face, went out and stood at the mouth of the cave. You see, in that repetition, we get a rhythm, you see, which makes you, which enables you to really understand the verse simply. Okay? Hiya. Mm, do you remember the nursery rhymes used to sing? Kitambo. The songs you used to sing when you were back in preschool. Or as many of you call it kindergarten. The songs like London Bridge is falling down, falling down, falling down. London Bridge is falling down, my sure lady. So that used to be one of the favorites. We all memorize that song because of the repetition. You see, you sing it once, you sing it twice, and in repeating yourself, you get to understand the song. You get to sing the song easily next time. So, the same way in this verse, the repetition of the great wind, an earthquake, a fire, and a gentle whisper enables you to grasp that. Like you can imagine an earthquake happening, then immediately after, there's a wind, there's a big fire, and the last thing you hear is a gentle whisper. You see, so we've gotten to establish that the repetition makes it simple to learn new things. Or let me also give you another longer statement. Can you try memorizing this? There was once a girl named Mary. Mary owned a small lamb. This lamb had an extremely white fleece. Mary liked to travel a lot. And wherever she would travel, her lamb would follow her. Okay, let me take it again. There was once a girl named Mary. Mary owned a small lamb. This lamb had an extremely white fleece. Mary liked to travel a lot. And whenever she would travel, her lamb would follow her. So have you tried memorizing that? Are you finding it hard? Do you not even remember the character's name is Mary? She had a lamp and the lamp would follow her. Well, an easier way to memorize that longer paragraph is to break it down into a small, to a small poem, which goes, Mary had a little lamp. Its fleece was as white as snow. And everywhere that Mary went, the lamp was sure to go. Once more, Mary had a little lamp. Its fleece was white as snow. And everywhere that Mary went, the lamp was sure to go. Which message was easier to understand? Can you remember the first one? Which goes, there was once a girl named Mary. Or is it easier to remember the second one? Mary had a little lamp. Mm -hmm. I believe it's the second one. It's easy to understand because it's like a short poem. Then, how was one of the ways of passing information more effective than the other? When you take it as a poem, it is easy to pass out the message that Mary had a lamp. It was white in color. It followed her everywhere. You see, it is easier to remember the chain of events. But in the first one, it sounds more like a boring paragraph in your compositions. You know those compositions right in school? Some of them are fun. Others are about speeches. Others are sports day. Mm -hmm. Then, I want now to involve you in a small activity. I want you at home to get any two pages. Any two pages of your notebooks. You see? As you have two pages, let's take the first one. And the second one. Simply, I want you to trace out 
the lines on the page. See, let's say we take the first line, we skip the next two, we go to the third line, we skip the next two, we go to the fourth, we skip the next two, we move on, the next two, the next two, the last. So, once you've established these lines, I want you to trace them all the way to the end. But since you're at home, get your ruler and trace these lines all the way to the top. Pole pole ru. Pole pole. Pole pole, the next line, the next line, the next line, and the last line. Once you've traced these lines straightly on your books, I want you to do the same on the other page. So now you end up with two pages with lines drawn, okay? And now with the help of mom or dad, or if you know how to use a scissors, I want you to cut along the lines, you see? You cut from the end to this end, from this end to the end. Make sure you're cutting straight lines. So you'll end up with little strips of paper like, it depends on the size you chose. So maybe one of your strips looks like this. Then the next one, another straight line, another straight line, another straight line, and the last one, you see. So once you have these long strips of paper, I want you to be creative. I want you to get any color pencil you like. Maybe you like pink. Maybe you like red. Or if you're also colorful, yellow, blue, or any color you choose. And once you now have both pages torn using a scissors, Usiraruwe Kama Mimi. This is just demonstration. You see? Uh, once you have both pages, which are in strips, I want you to take these strips and I'm going to show you how to weave. Okay? So you have one moment. You have these two pages. When you take these two, the first one should go over the first paper and under the next one. See, the Peter, Jew, but on the second paper, it's gone underneath. Then the next one should go underneath the first paper and over the next paper, okay, higher. So now we have something that looks like a bit of a square, if you can see, then since you're now you're dealing with all the strips, not just the two I'm demonstrating with, so the next one will change the pattern and go above the paper and then underneath the next one. So you remember, ikipita juya kwanza, it goes underneath the second one. Higher. So depending on the size of paper you chose, maybe you're doing with A4, A5, you should end up with something that looks like this. The first piece is on top, the next one is underneath, on top, underneath, on top, underneath. So now you have this fun little rectangle of yours. And since I told you to get creative, you can choose to color one side. So if you chose to color blue, you end up with a blue strip on the end and nice blue boxes in between. So this can be very useful to you when you go to church. So like today, we've learned the story of who? We've learned about Elijah. So let's say the other Sunday you learned about King David. Maybe you read the story of Jesus. Maybe you also learned about Moses. So if you want to quickly remember who you learned last Sunday, you can write on your little square. You see, very quick, very simple to make. And it's very useful. So, higher. I'll see who will make the most colorful. Sindio? Higher. Then, wasn't that a fun activity? Let's now turn 
to what what do you know about the bible sindio i as i started i said historians are people who write about history so if i wrote about the life of the former president honorable mwai kibaki i would begin mwai kibaki was born in nyeri he went to this school he finished form 4 in this year he became a minister of parliament in this year you see i follow the chain of events so in the same way the bible it begins with creation you see so like who was the first author in the bible it's moses because we learn of the deuterocanonical books which are the first five books genesis exodus leviticus numbers and deuteronomy sendio the first five books were written by moses very simple books which begin with the creation story you see moses was not in the book of genesis but he wrote about it can you think of that it's the same way you write of compositions about a wedding you never attended isn't it ama the way you write about sports day na hata labda hujaya na sports day ama maybe a journey to kisumu and you shall go is nyeri or mombasa you see you become creative in your writing but this time moses was not creative in his writing moses was shown the creation story by god or simply he was told the same way your friend tells you a story of how they went to kfc how they shop at kare 4 mm? some of you call it kare 4 again a kare 4 you see the fun stories you tell each other now imagine your friend was writing them so moses was god's good friend moses was shown how to was given the 10 commandments moses led the israelites from egypt all the way to canaan so in this we get to see moses as one author but throughout the whole bible there are many people who've helped in the writing there's moses there's who else you can think of another prophet like elijah any other prophet there's ezra you can also talk of people like isaiah jeremiah hosea sindio there's so many people who've helped in the writing of the bible the same way like when you read of a good textbook from school you will see that ikona many authors moja ni ji shell smith nani the other one could be john kamau the other one could be paul ngen or bildad kagia you see these are people who are making the who have contributed to make one long story so that's the same way we got our bible our bible is a set of books written by different authors who are given the word by by god so the same way we the same bible comes down to books like matthew luke mark john those are the in the new testament all written by different authors uh, and i leave you with one question who okay which author wrote the most books in the bible i want you to think of that you see and if you're watching you can comment and i'll go through the comments you know i'll tell you who, who got the right answer so the question once more is who okay which author wrote the most books in the bible remember which author wrote the most books in the bible hi write the answer and maybe you'll get a prize saying maybe hi then now from this long lesson we've had today What does God want me to do or what have you learned from this lesson? Hi, you can take it that a historian is someone who records history. Sindio, someone who goes about noting down what happened today, what happened yesterday, what happened last year, what happened the other year. You see, that's someone who deals with history. And the same way, let's look at the book of Luke. The book of Luke is in the New Testament. We're going to read from Luke chapter 10 verse 25 to 37. This is a very nice story of the parable of the good Samaritan. Hi, if you've heard this parable before, 
we all know that there was a there was a man who was traveling and on the way he was ambushed by robbers imagine you're coming from school then people come in front of you with a knife that's very sad isn't it then they take your lunch box they take your textbooks they take your shoes they take your sweater so you go home without all your uniform without your bag without your homework so you would feel bad but now in the parable of the good samaritan jesus teaches how a child of god is supposed to treat his or her neighbors you see that the jewish people didn't like samaritans and samaritans didn't like the jewish people in this parable the jews who walked by the injured man didn't help the jewish brother but the samaritan did and that's why the parable is called the parable of the good samaritan jesus is saying that in god's kingdom the children of god help each other even if they are very different you see like in school one of you is very tall others are short some are upper category medium you see but when teacher wants one of you to rub the board he'll call the tall students ndio ule mrefu atakuja arab vizuri kutoka juu kutoka chini ndio but when teacher wants any of you to read a story he'll give the chance to the shorter person cause the shorter person still can read ndio venye haizi fikia board uko juu but akisoma story books yako the same level na nyinyi haya so jesus is saying that in god's kingdom the children of god help each other even if they are very different from each other and even if they are enemies sawa so, if you don't know this parable you might think that it was just a sad story of a man who got beaten up you might miss the whole truth sindio since you have all the time at home just turn to the book of luke chapter 10 and start reading from verse 25 all the way to verse 37 this is a good story of the parable of the good samaritan sawa sawa and now i will ask you this question did you find this activity hard was it hard i believe it's easy sindio and with that i would like us to close today's service with a word of prayer sawa sawa okay let's pray abba father Thank you for the wonderful session we've had together. That Lord, even as we do continue with the rest of the activities throughout this day, Father, may you be with us, may you guide us, and may you protect us. Watch over our families, watch over our friends, watch over our enemies. May you protect our nation, O oh Lord, and Father Almighty, may you keep us safe at all times. For it is through Jesus' mighty name I do pray, believing and trusting. Amen. Bye 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 Would you like to identify your purpose? Do you want to make a difference in your generation? Look no further. SK St Gertrude Parish Clay City and its teens ministry present The authentic talk where we set things straight and draw a clear line between worldly perceptions and biblical principles. Tune into our YouTube channel at ACK St Gertrude Parish Clay City. Like, comment and subscribe. Join the conversation on our social media platforms at The Authentic Teens on Facebook and at Authentic_Teens on Instagram. Come let's interact as we grow spiritually.